Welcome to the vlog. I'm super jacked on these vlogs. Uh, I love vlog style videos for a few reasons. One of them being, it's not super corporate. It gets a message across, you get kind of entertained and hopefully learn something too. So this, this vlog, first vlog, welcome to it. I'm um, hopefully gonna do a lot more of these. Um, Cause like I said, I'm excited about them. So first vlog, I got to go to Fort Benning, Georgia for the best ranger competition. And while I was there, I interviewed a bunch of guys from Kiwana Services, and I just feel like they do a way better job at explaining what best ranger competition is, why Kiwana Services was there, and all that sort of good stuff. So I'm gonna let them do all that explaining. I just wanted to get on here, say welcome to the vlog, and yeah, excited for it. Let's get into it. I know I said I was gonna leave the ex explaining up to all the guys in the interviews, but I just wanted to go over a little bit of what the Best Ranger competition is, and I'm just gonna read off my phone because it's way too much for me to remember. So the Best Ranger competition is an annual military competition that takes place at the Fort Benning military base in Georgia. The competition is, was first held in 1982, and since then, it's grown to become one of the most physically and mentally challenging events in the United States Army. The competition is designed to test the physical and mental stamina of the soldiers who participate. It includes a variety of events such as running, swimming, obstacle courses, marksmanship, and even a night navigation course. Uh, the competition lasts for three days and the soldiers who participate are required to complete each event as quickly and accurately as possible. One thing I really want you to stick around for, I think is super valuable, is there's a really unique story at the end where David Ball shares uh, about an experience he had while on tour in Iraq. I hope you stick around for it. There's lots of value in it. It's, it's such a great story and really moving. So that's at the end, stick around to the end. So this is the coolest part of this thing, dual feed. So you can select inside of the of, inside of the turret, you can go AP or HE, and there's a switch right there by the gunner seat. So you just, you, on the fly, you can be firing HE, switch over and go over to AP at that point too. So it's a 25 mic mic, it's a bullet, it's the size of this water bottle here. And the HE ones a point detonate and explode when they impact. So I'll tell you a funny story. In the, uh, uh, when we were in Iraq, we were uh, firing on the, um, coax and we got approval to go hot on the 25 and first time we'd ever fired the 25 in Iraq so we start firing we haven't fired a gun yet manual safes on all right so we're torpedoing rounds out of the ejection port and you know we're what, what the hell's going on right suddenly I remember oh sh mechanical safe is on reaching in there I'm turning it off at the same moment the driver pops the hatch Max elevates, and my arm is jammed up inside of this thing, right? So anyway, driver sl slams the hat shut, I pull my arm back out of there, and it is just, I can't believe I didn't break my arm. So I feel like this competition was a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. Uh, first off, to be able to go to Fort Benning, Georgia and just be on that base as a Canadian even, be on that base and see this stuff was amazing. And then to be able to shoot it and document it was was so, so unreal. The whole time I was there, my eyes wide open, just like couldn't believe I got to witness guys roping, fast roping out of helicopters, uh, doing all that obstacle course stuff was like really stuff you see in the movies or 
you know, see on YouTube or something, but to be actual, actually there witnessing it was next level. Best Ranger is an awesome competition. It's something that is unique that most civilians don't know about, but this is our Super Bowl. For vets, these are, are the best two-man teams in the United States Army. They compete in a grueling three-day competition all day, all night. Most people, when they think of Best Ranger, they, and they even heard of it, they think it's a marathon. It's so much worse than a marathon. They did a marathon by 10 a.m. on the first day. We're into day two. They've got all day tomorrow before they're done. It, it's also an amazing a place to meet amazing men and women that are serving our country. And also talk to them about what do they want to do when they get out. Most people go through the military. They do a hitch of four years, and then they got to figure out the next step in their life. We want to be that opportunity for them. And this is a great place to come and meet them. I'm a veteran of the United States Army and the uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. The, the, the first job that I had when I got out of the Army was with Quanta Services and I've been with this company ever since. Quanta is a family, we care about those people and we want to provide them with opportunity when they get out of the military. Quanta has a unique program that is our uh, called V, which is our Veteran Electrical Entry Program. Uh, this program offers direct entry for veterans who come and attend the, our program at the Lazy Q. V is an incredible program. It's four months of intensive training, but the training is free. You get a paycheck while you're going through the training. And when you graduate, guaranteed position, guaranteed job as an apprentice with the IBW. Okay, now I'm out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> Okay, we're in Georgia. Georgia. Here's Georgia. Almost. Almost. On the bridge, there's the Chattahoochee. Chattahoochee. <laughs> and there's Alabama. Are we there? Yep. We're in Alabama. We're in Alabama. I think it's great that Qantas here is a sponsor. Um, you know, we like to hire a lot of people because we have a big organization, but we want to hire the very best people. So what better place to do it than here? And we're seeing the very best, um, like I mentioned before, of United States soldiers here today. There's so many opportunities at Qantas available to veterans. Um, you know, we, we typically think of them as, we want to bring you in as a line worker, but there are so many other opportunities that uh, we have veterans that are in management. We have veterans, you know, across the board that are attorneys, accountants, and, you know, any job you can think of that we have in our organization, there are veterans, um, certainly in those roles. Craft skill, it's, it's obviously something that's, you know, a, I would say call it like a trade, and uh, it's a specific skill that we have incredible training facilities and opportunities at Quanta to get people trained up on these craft skill labor and then we're gonna use them and develop them over their career. It's an incredible opportunity, compensated very well um, compared to certainly other people in the industry. And it's just an awesome place to work. So hopefully uh, we, can, we can pull from some, some of the people here. So if you look at the individuals that are here, 
they have that A-type mindset. And if you look at linemen, that's exactly the kind of individuals that are attracted to the trades, that are attracted to line work. So by coming here, we're introducing it to, the, to those individuals that would be successful at this. So the Veteran Electrical Entry Program is a joint partnership between the IBW NECA and Quanta Services. And as you know, we've mentioned before, individuals exiting from the military that are interested in becoming linemen, we bring them in, we pay them while they attend. Milwaukee provides the tools, Buckingham provides the climbing gear, and Quanta Services food, lodging, education, training, it's all provided so they can start that path on becoming an alignment. So I was in the Army for five years as an infantry officer. Ten years ago, I was going to compete in uh, the 2013 Best Ranger competition, and unfortunately, I injured my arm jumping out of a plane two days before this competition started. Quanta has uh, a workforce of 55,000 plus uh, individuals spread all across the United States, Canada, and Australia. So really, for a veteran that wants to go back home or go to a certain area, you can almost bet that there's a quanta operating unit there doing some pretty amazing things in terms of transmission line work, distribution lines, pipelines, construction of uh, utility scale renewable, so wind farms, solar farms. I mean, quanta is building the future infrastructure of the United States uh, everywhere you can think of. Craft skill labor, what we're talking about is work that is physical in nature, is a team type environment, but there is a very heavy element of technical knowledge and technical expertise that can build over the course of the career. So just like someone coming from the military might have built a little bit of technical expertise over the course of three, five, 10 years, at a place like Juana, you can take a skill set that you start to learn as an apprentice or a journeyman and really build a career off it that's gonna last you for 20, 25, 30 years. Rangers lead the way. We're here to actually recruit. We actually want veterans that are going to be discharged or leaving the military to come join our industry. VEEP, which we call the Veterans Electrical Entry Program, was targeted towards our veterans since we can get them involved as an apprenticeship program in the electrical industry. IBW Nickel years ago decided they wanted to find a way to recruit. Uh, it's the most advantageous recruit for our industry. Somebody's used to working outside, working hard, know what it means to uh, go out, get up and go to work every morning. Our veterans fit that profile exactly. So we want to build a program which develop into a pre-apprenticeship program, not necessarily for veterans, but the pre-apprenticeship allows us to direct into these people into apprenticeship programs when they complete. The benefits of an IBW NICA apprenticeship program is that you have a jointly sponsored program between labor and management that gets together to create a training program for an apprentice. How do you train someone for a career pathway? That jointly sponsored program also has a multi-employer participation, which allows a training between employers to gain job skills. Craft skills is something that you learn on the job. We can provide tools in a classroom to give you educational tools to go out and be trained on a job site and sometimes in the, the JDC training center as well.
So while I got wounded in Iraq, I was on a Bradley. So there was it was this vehicle right here that, that I was wounded on board. The vehicle was destroyed on the impact. Uh, we, we had an explosive before penetrator. This was uh, Western Baghdad in 2006. And the EFP uh, actually penetrated the fuel cell underneath the bottom of the turret. And the turret caught on fire and burned. Um, but the crew was able to get out, but the, uh, the driver was wounded and I was wounded as well. Come on in. Yep. So, commander's handle, you got your gunner's handles there. So, your commander's independent viewers up there, so the gunner and the uh, commander can look at two completely different things at one time. So if you're sitting there in a the gunner seat, you can be firing at something. I can be looking at something completely different at the exact same time. And then it's, I, all I've got to do is I can actually slave the gun over to what I'm looking at. So you can finish your engagement and then I can hit a button and it'll put you right on to whatever I'm at. I can even like pre-aim so I can have the reticle exactly on target. And then as soon as you're done with the engagement, hit the button, put you over onto the target. You can start that next engagement immediately and it's already on target at that point. It's actually, it's missing the top part of the breach here, but this is your 25 mic mic. Your ammunition comes up on those belts up through there. And then all your ammo is stored underneath the turret. So. So all your, so you'll have, you know, something like 400 rounds of ammunition inside of the turret of those great big uh, 25 millimeter rounds that I was talking about before. All your fire controls, you got tow missiles, 25 mic mic, coax, everything else on it too. It's nice and roomy, right? All right, so, but dude, I want you to imagine you got a plate on your back and a plate on your front too, right? All right. Oh yeah, you're just the helmet. absolutely just jammed into this thing. Yep. The biggest thing that, that jacks with people is it's stabilized. So when you're looking through, so this is your sight right here, right? When you're looking through that sight, what you're looking at is rock solid. It's not moving at all. But all this, but the Bradley is doing this and the turret's turning that way. People get motion sick. Wicked bad. Yeah, and then I, so this is what I was talking, you can switch, you can switch back and forth here. So you can run, so you can go AP, HE while you're firing. So you could be, you know, fire, 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 switch over to HE. You can go to HE and start firing HE right after that too. Uh, this is, well, the grenade launchers, it's a smoke grenade. So it's your, your smoke grenades. Kind of, yeah, not nearly as cool as grenade launcher though, right? When my gunner got hit, um, it was pitch black inside of the Bradley. So he, you know, every um, got inside of the turret and I'm sitting there, I'm talking to him, like, are you all right? And he says, I think I feel something. I mean, it's pitch black in here, right? Because it's the middle of the night. And he says, I think I feel something on my neck. And he reaches over behind you, there's that light. He turns the light on, and when he turns the light on, he puts his hand up on his neck and pulls his hand away, and he's covered in blood and turns and looks at me and just hoses me down. So I immediately reach over, I'd clamp my hands around his neck. He, what happened is he had shrapnel hit him in a carotid artery there. It was absolutely incredible, the fact that he lived. Uh, he was drenched me. His eyes got this big immediately, right? So I got him to put my hands around his neck and I got the IFAC out and uh, put a bandage around, but I got the CVC on, so I'm talking to the driver. I'm like, dude, just go, get us back to the fob, because we weren't far from the fob when we got hit. And so Bradley takes off, but the Bradley had been hit, and I didn't know whether or not the Bradley would keep running. Right? Like, I didn't know the extent of the damage, right? Because, I mean, it, it had happened, you know, two seconds, right? Big blast, kind of everybody's recovering from it. And then all of a sudden, you know, he, you know, well, I'm looking at him and he's just spewing blood. Immediately, mouth fills up with blood. He can't talk. And we're hauling ass back to the farm. As we're, as we're coming back, I mean, it was probably, I mean, it, maybe 10 minutes, maybe less than that where we're driving. And, and he goes unconscious while we're on the way. So we, we come into the FOB and they've actually had these uh, Jersey barriers set up, right? Because they didn't want to allow, you know, traffic into certain parts of the FOB. We just monster truck the Jersey barrier, just right over it. We're in our own FOB, just monster truck the Jersey barrier. And, uh, and then we we already called, they knew they had a wounded guy coming in. So we pull right up in front of the battalion aid station. I, top, I jumped out of the top of the turret 
and then uh, he was unconscious, but opened the turd shield door and they lay him down and pull him out and they slide him out of the back of Bradley. But of course, I'm freaking out because I'm really worried. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I, that I, this guy just died, right? This medic comes up to me and he goes, hey, you need to come with me. And I'm, I'm like, oh, no, I want to stay with my guy. I want to stay with my guy. He's like, you need to come with me right now. I don't want to leave. And he reaches over and he pokes me in the chest, right? I got my body armor on, but he's like, you have a smoking hole in the center of your chest right now. I, you need to come with me. I need to find out how deep that goes. Now, it actually it went in the plate. There was a piece of shrapnel went in the plate and didn't penetrate the plate. I am I got drenched in his blood, right? So I'm covered in blood. I didn't know it, but I'd been wounded. I caught shrapnel on the side of my face. But my adrenaline was pumping so much because of him. I had no idea that, that I was even hit. And it wasn't until the medic walked up to me and I'm freaking out about the guy, the medic. And he's like, come with, you need to come with me right now, right? And he kind of, you know, I mean, hindsight, right? He looked at me and was like, uh, hey dude, like, you know, you don't know that you're hit and you, you, I don't know if you got something in you or not. So they brought me in, they cut my body armor off of me and, and they cut all the rest of the clothes off of me. And same thing again, I'm like, I'm all right, I'm all right. Is he all right? Cause I can hear him intubating. I mean, we're right next to each other, right? And they're trying to intubate him and, and he's choking and coughing up blood and everything. And we're, we're five feet from each other, right? They're, and they're cutting all my uniform off of me. And I, you know, is, I'm, is he gonna be all right? Is he gonna be all right? Just sit down and shut up, right? And then finally I'm like, and the, uh, the PA grabs me and he's like, I'm trying to find out if you have a hole in you or not. Like I'm cutting your uniform off you and you're gonna sit down and shut up. I, I ended up, uh, um, got uh, shrapnel all through the top of my head and everything else from that. Well, so I had my CVC on it. It broke the side of my CVC on the right side in the speaker. And then, but the CVC doesn't really cover everything. So it was face, front, right, and then back of the neck, top of the head too. But so I was in a meeting with Kwana like in 2011 or, you know, and I was just sitting in the back of, the, of, of this meeting and all of a sudden my head starts itching up here and I'll, I feel a poke and I reach up and pull on this tiny little, and they still, they work themselves out years later, right? I pulled a piece of shrapnel out of my head while I was in the middle of this meet. You know, I'm talking, you know, just absolutely tiny, right? You know, I mean, what are, they were, you know, it's, it's an explosion. So, you know, I mean, the blast isn't yeah. what kills you. There's the shrapnel, but still, you know, I mean, it kind of, I don't really remember exactly kind of right before or right after, but the vivid memory that I have is, kind of being, you know, is, is my gunner being like, something's wrong and then turning that light on. Uh, and I hadn't thought about that story until I was looking behind you there and saw that light and I was like, oh yeah. Yep. Ski lives in Florida today. He had had a baby, I think while he was deployed. So he had a daughter and he hadn't met his daughter yet. And, uh, and I saw a photo of him on Facebook here recently and she was uh, graduating from high school. And it's like, I, th it was that long ago, right? All right, now we should let somebody else get in here. <laughs> Watch your head getting out on the turret. That's how you can tell it has oil in it because it's the smoking. <laughs> if it stops smoking, it means it ran out of oil. Okay, so we're obviously going to get better at these. We're going to perfect these vlogs as we go, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you got some value out of it. And yeah, I'm excited to bring you more. So I'm going to do that super YouTuber stuff right now and just go make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff to the bottom. It really helps. I really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.